I'm reading today from the book of Romans, chapter number 15. And uh, verse number 4. And then we'll go to Hebrews, chapter number 4. And verse number 12. Amen. We're going to be preaching about the authority of the Word of God. The authority of the Word of God. And... Uh, and I will say that uh, we are glad Jesse's back tonight, today. Hallelujah. And I've got two messages that we're going to be preaching this morning. I'm going to be preaching, first of all, today, the first message, and then our, our second message. I, I know we're going to, I'm going to kind of give you just a little heads up. I'm preaching on the drunkard song. And my second message, I'm titled it the Drunkard Song, so you might want to stick around for that one. As a matter of fact, I might even try singing like one, so you never know. Amen. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 4. Hallelujah. And uh, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 12 said, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He said that word of God is a powerful word. It's a quick word. It's sharp. And it can get into the very depths of your heart and your soul. Your spirit and your soul. Dividing the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It separates even the finest of things. That it would be hard for us to comprehend a separation point but he said the word of God can do that second Timothy chapter number three and verse number 16 and I'll and I will read but I feel like this is the direction that the Lord would have us to go all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. He said the scripture is given by the inspiration of God. This did not come from man, but the word of God came. The Bible, we call it the Bible. Scripture is by the inspiration of God. God was the one, amen, that gave us his word. The Bible also said, holy men of God spake as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we understand, amen, that the Bible that we have today is a, is a powerful thing. Amen. Uh, with the combination of it and the Holy Ghost, amen, you can fight anything that the devil would try to throw in your path. Amen. Whenever you are praying and the power of the Holy Ghost living in your life, if you can have the Word of God hidden down deep in your heart, there's nothing that the devil can throw in your path that can keep you from serving God. Amen. We have the most powerful weapon at our disposal. Amen. The Word of God. Let's love the Lord and ask Him to speak to our hearts today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for your power. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you, Lord, for the saints of God that are in this place. I pray, O oh God, that you would bring encouragement and strength to our hearts. I pray, O oh God, that you would help us to develop our faith and have an understanding of how powerful and how awesome that your word is. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your glory to be upon this service today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. Amen. I, I under, uh, we, as we read in Romans chapter 15, 
he made this statement, whatsoever things were written aforetime. In other words, the reason that the word of God was written, amen, is, is, that, is for two reasons. Number one, it was for our learning. Amen. There is a teaching process that the word of God, amen, gives us. I, when I was a, when I was in my teen years and even in my early 20s, I used to really be awed uh, with my grandfather's love for the Word of God. I have a clear understanding of it, amen, of what he went through uh, to have that love for the Word of God the longer that I served the Lord. Uh, but I used to be awed whenever I would go into Grandpa and Grandma's house and, and there wasn't a time that I went there and sitting down at the table, you know, down in Illinois. Uh, we'd, we'd, uh, they lived out in the country whenever, whenever we were evangelizing. And, uh, and I would pull into their drive and, and uh, we'd sit down at the table and everybody knows I don't like breakfast. But... Uh, I can do without it. I don't like eggs. And Grandma, because I was spending the night next morning, she always served me breakfast. And, uh, <laughs> and her breakfast was over easy eggs with bacon and toast. <laughs> and of all the eggs, I didn't really care for over easy. I'd rather have them scrambled so I could t add some Tabasco sauce to cover the taste of them. You know? <laughs> But just so that I wouldn't hurt Grandma, she, she, she'd throw two of those things on my plate. And I'd say, well, okay, i got to choke these ignorant things down. And, I, <laughs> and Grandpa, he'd eat one egg, and there'd be two more left on the plate. And he'd say, here, son, uh, you're a growing boy. You need these two. <laughs> and for a fellow that didn't like eggs, I'd end up eating four eggs by the time it was done with. And, I'd, you know, <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to tell them I'd rather have the toast and the bacon and you can keep the eggs, you know, to yourself. And, and, uh, but, but there are a lot of memories of sitting at the table after breakfast. And we'd just sit and talk, drinking coffee and, and, uh, you know, they'd ask where I'd been and all that kind of stuff. And, and then I'd talk, we'd talk about how things were going with them and just the chit-chat that goes on, and, you know, just whenever you're talking. And, but we wouldn't be at it but for about a half an hour, 45 minutes, and something would be said. And uh, Grandpa or Grandma, one of them would say, either Mom and I or Dad and I were reading just yesterday. And let me show you what, what the Lord showed us. And, uh, and Grandpa would go get the Bible. And he'd flip open to, a lot of times, some of those Old Testament minor prophets. And he'd start reading. And, uh, and you could tell from the way that he handled the book that he loved the book. I mean, just the way he picked the book up. You could tell that he loved the Word of God. And he opened those pages with an awe and a respect, amen, for the Word of God. And here, I know it's over here. He may not have known chapter and verse, but he knew what side of the page that it was on. And he would flip through and he would, uh, and he'd find that place. And yes, this is where it's at. And he would begin to read. And uh, it, it amazed me that he could, you know, when I was a kid, I think, or when I was a teenager and a young adult, I thought, you've been preaching for over 50 years. And I know you've read that thing because Daddy told me that he read it all the time. He said, I can remember every night after work he'd sit down and read it. And you would think that if you had read the Word of God 50, 60, 70 times, you would think that after reading it that many times, that the Bible would somehow be a, a place where just about to know it by heart. 
you know, you could just say, I already know where that verse is, and I know, you know, what's going to happen next because I've read it this many times. But for somebody to say, I was reading it yesterday, and the Lord showed me something. I mean, you know, a 70-year-old man that's been reading it all of his life, and uh, 70, I don't know, probably 75 at the time, and uh, and he said, and had been reading it all of his life. And for him to say, and the Lord showed me. And uh, I've uh, I've been around the church a long time, but uh, we've been preaching now. I reckon it's probably been over 20 years, so it was somewhere close to that. And I have to say that I was reading the Word of God the other day. And, and the Lord shows me. And the Lord showed me again. And I'm so, and I can, and I can understand just, just about this much of what Grandpa was saying when he said, I was reading the Word of God. And the Lord showed me. There's something about this book. It becomes more precious every day that we live. I love his word. Amen. And the Bible said that it was written for our learning. Amen. There's some things that we can learn, amen, from the word of God. Amen. First of all, I think the first thing that we can learn is to have patience. Amen. And then the word of God Amen. The, the second thing that the Word of God gives us is it gives us a comfort. Amen. Beyond the learning, there is a comfort that the Word of God has. Amen. I'm glad I know, amen, about the comfort of the Word of God. I, I may not know what tomorrow holds, but if I can find my way to two places, to a place where I can read and a place where I can pray. God can speak to me in those two realms and I can face tomorrow no matter what, amen, it holds in store for me because whatsoever things that were written before time were written for my learning. Oh, hallelujah. And I have a hope in the word of God. Hallelujah. Because I know, amen, there's been some folks that were there before I ever got there. Amen. And they have already been through the trial that I have faced within my life. Amen. And though I live in the day of cell phones and laptops, Amen. The same God of yesterday is the same God of today. Hallelujah. And the same God of my tomorrow. And he will, oh praise the name of the Lord, he will take care of me. Amen. In my today because I can look at, the, at what was written in my yesterday and understand, amen, that there is a power there. Amen, that, that can give me the encouragement to keep on pressing on. Hallelujah. So I got to looking at, at one little word, amen, and I'm going to just kind of touch on that word, something that is written. Written. To write something down. You know, I heard the story about the, about the elderly couple that both of them were having just a touch of a problem with their memory. And uh, the husband says, Sweetheart, I'm going, uh, I'm going to uh, the kitchen. I'm going to get me a cup of ice cream. Do you want some? And she said, Yes, I do. She said, uh, But write it down and you'll forget what kind that I want. And he said, um, I'm, I can remember a cup of ice cream. I don't have that bad of a, of a memory. She said, well, I want some chocolate syrup on that ice cream. And he said, I can remember that. And I uh, said, uh, well, I also want some whipping cream. And she said, but write it down because that's what I want. 
And uh, he said, nah, I don't need to do that. I can remember whipping cream and chocolate syrup and ice cream. And uh, so he walked into the kitchen, come walking out about 15 minutes later. And he had some scrambled eggs and toast. And uh, handed it to her, and she said, I knew if you didn't write it down, you'd forget my bacon. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about the Word of God, once it's written down, sometimes God speaks to us. And we think we can remember it. But I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, but there's been a little forgetter that I've had a couple times, and sometimes the things that God has promised me, I didn't write it down, and it may be a month or two months later when all of a sudden I remember that I wasn't going to the kitchen to buy it to get some scrambled eggs, but I was going to the kitchen to get some ice cream. So the word of God that is written, the reason it was written is because if it wasn't written we'd forget all about it. And we wouldn't know, amen, what it was for. Now, now I got to read in Exodus 20, 24 and verse number 12, and, uh, and so this is the first thing that was written that I really find, that I find that would be extremely important. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. He said, if you just go down, if I just tell you to tell the people how to live, how to act in their life, what they should and what they shouldn't do, if I just tell them what to do and what they shouldn't do, they'll forget before it's ever out of your mouth. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have you come to the top of the mountain and I'm going to give word in a written form. And the commandments of how you should live, how you should talk, how you should act, how you should, uh, how you should treat me, how you should treat others, it's within the pages of the written word of God. And Moses, whenever he came down from the mountain, he said... God spoke to me today, and I'm just kind of putting it in today's language, but he said, God spoke to me while I was on top of the mountain, and this is what the Lord said. And he flipped open the book that God had given him to write, and he began to give instructions on how to live, how to, <laughs> what to do and what not to do, Amen. And, and he gave him instructions on how to treat others. He gave him instructions on how to honor the Lord. As a matter of fact, he even gave him instructions on how to worship and when to worship. Amen. And how to serve the Lord. He gave him all kinds of instructions on how to live his life. Amen. Can I tell you that this book called the Bible is still, it can still be used to tell us how to live, how to walk, how to worship, how to talk, how to live before the Lord, and how to serve the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's through the Word of God that I can learn how to live. And, uh, and so, I, so I stepped into the New Testament, and, uh, and as I stepped into the New Testament, I, I, I remembered, first of all, the story, amen, of uh, Jesus at the age of 12 going into the temple and uh, with his parents, and whenever they left and he sat at the feet of the doctors and lawyers at that day, and the Bible said he confounded them. It, it blew their minds Amen. The things that he was saying. You know what he was talking about? He was talking about the word of God. That Old Testament word. And as he was talking about it, he was expounding upon it to a point that they would know that there is still an authority 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years 
after the beginning of man, after the first writing that had been done by man, that there was an authority that the Word of God had that still held value thousands of years after it was written. And the Lord, amen, embraced that authority that was in the Word of God and he looked at the doctors and lawyers. He didn't say, amen, it's ancient stuff, we need to forget it. But instead, he let the Word of God, amen, begin to expound and he began to fulfill what was within the pages of the Word of God. As a matter of fact, whenever it came time, in Luke chapter number 4 and verse number 1, for him to travel into the wilderness. Amen. You know what he did. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, in verse number 1, Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from, the or from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, oh hallelujah, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, amen, of God. He said, I just want to tell you, I could say, no, I'm not doing that. But the best way for me to face the attack of the devil is not just for me to stand on my own strength, the strength of flesh, but the best strength that I can stand on is in the power of the written word of God. And so I stand upon the word of God and I say, God said, his word said, it is written man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, hallelujah. In other words, amen, whatever comes that the word of God says, that's what I should be feeding on. Hallelujah. So the first, the first, uh, the first thing that he talked about, amen, whenever he addressed the devil, amen, in his, in his counterattack, he said, the word of God is so powerful that it, it needs to be more important to you than the bread, your physical bread that you would eat. He said, that's how important the word of God is. Then Jesus and the devil takes him up to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Some would like to say that he was showing him the kingdoms of, that he could see from his physical, from his physical position. But the Bible said he, could, he showed him the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, and all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He said, I'm going to take that Old Testament commandment that was written by Moses, and I'm going to use the Old Testament law. Amen. I'm going to take that Old Testament law and I'm going to use it. Amen. I'm going to use it for the, uh, the as an authority against you. He said, Moses wrote, Amen. You would worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. He said, I'm standing before you, not in the authority of just saying, I am the Son of God, which he could have said that. He could have said, I'm the Word made flesh. But instead, he showed us, a man as flesh, how to face the devil. He said, the best way to face him is by knowing what the Word of God said. When the devil begins to question you, why don't you go to this particular place? Why don't you say, amen, those type of things? Why don't you cuss? Why don't you lie? Why don't you cheat? Amen, don't say I'm a good individual. Let the devil know, 
Amen. The thief has no part in the kingdom of God. The liar shall not inherit his kingdom. Amen. Let the devil know that the profane man, amen, is not going to make it into, the, into heaven. Amen. When he begins to tempt you and say, amen, you ought to do this. You ought to know the word of God well enough to say, I know that the word of God teaches me it's wrong to do that. I'm not doing it because of a list of rules that a church has. I'm doing it because the Word of God says it's wrong. I live my life, amen, the way that I do because I have chosen. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. We're not going to the way, amen, of the devil. But we're going to worship the Lord. He said the best way to address him is to use God's Word. Use the Word of God and 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 speak to him that way. Verse number 9. Amen. And he brought him to, into Jerusalem, set him on a temp, pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, the devil said, Well, if you're going to use the word, I guess I can pull a scripture out of context, and I can use it too. And he began to pull out of context. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. You ought to keep reading before you, before you stop it. Amen. Because that's not what it really means there, Mr. Devil. Amen. And so the Lord just said, <laughs> the Lord said, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He said, I'm just going to, uh, if you're going to throw a little bit at me, I'm going to tempt, uh, I'm going to bring it right back at you. And I'm going to tell you that the best way, amen, to attack the devil is to attack him with the word of God. And whenever he faced him the third time using the word of God, amen, the devil left him for a season. He'll be back another day to tempt him again. He'll be back another day to try to try him again because he was flesh. He was all God and he was all man. He, and the devil be back. But, but the word of God sent him, on a, sent him on a run. I tell you there are times whenever the devil would try to come against us as a church. And we might be tempted to do some things that we shouldn't. And if we'll use the word of God. Amen. Maybe we don't get rid of him completely. But you can get rid of him for a time. And next time he shows up. And use the same weapon you used before. The same way that he left last time, he'll leave again this time because he don't like the Word of God. There is a power that comes with the Word. Now I want to read down a little bit further. Luke 4, chapter, chapter 4 and verse number 16. This is the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. And, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was. He went up into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to speak unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. The beginning of his ministry, he stepped up and he could have said, I want everybody blind that's here today, I want you to come up to the front and I'm, gonna, and I'm going to touch you and you're going to be healed. I want everybody that's, uh, that, has, uh, that is oppressed by the devil, I want you to stand on this side and we're going to touch you and it's going to be healed. No, he didn't do that. He began his ministry by saying, hand me the book of Isaiah. I want scripture to fulfill and I want to prove through scripture what I'm doing is right and what I'm doing is confirmed by the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I, I feel like, amen, this pulpit, 
is not a place to display what I can do, how I can speak, what I can say. But the reason this pulpit is here is because it's the place where the Word of God can come forth. If somebody comes up and in pride begins to use the, use the pulpit for any other purpose, don't listen to that individual. This place was designed for one purpose in mind. It was that I could find salvation through the preaching of the Word of God. Hallelujah. I want His Word to have the power within my life, amen, that it was designed to have. His Word, amen, is the most important thing that I can have within my life. Psalm said, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, hallelujah. There's a power that comes within the written word of God. Let's love the Lord together today. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and several times... There's another set of, there's another word that is used several times through the Gospels, and that is that it might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled. Now this was done that it might be fulfilled. And, it, and whenever it says that, it will go on, and a lot of times it will go on and it will say, this happened because the prophet said this, and this is why it had to happen. Another, uh, for instance... Amen. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it was done that it might be fulfilled. When he was born in, of a virgin, amen, it was that it might be fulfilled. Amen. Everything that, that is there, it was a confirmation. Hallelujah. It was a constant, amen, the life of Jesus Christ was a constant, constant confirming that the Old Testament, New Testament hadn't been written yet, amen, that the Old Testament was and is the authority of the Word of God. Amen. If anybody questions anything about it, understand that it's already been confirmed. The New Testament confirms that the Old Testament is the Word of God. You can't take that away. It's the, the Jesus just constantly uses. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you remember whenever he went into the temple? Amen. At the end of his ministry? Amen. In verse number in Matthew 21 and verse number 12. Jesus went into the temple of God and he cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple, overthrew the money, the, the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. If I stop there and I just let you know, he could do that because he's God and he didn't have to tell them why he did it. He could have said, I'm doing this because I'm God and I don't like it. And that would have been good enough. But the Lord, amen, understood the importance of people like you and me understanding the authority of the word. And so from that point, he said, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. He said, the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing in the temple today is because you have broken the old scripture that said, amen, that it's to be a house of prayer. You're not making it that. The Word of God, amen, the authority of the Word of God has said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And because it's not that, I will overturn the money changers' tables. I will send the seats of them that said, sold the doves. I'm going to overturn them. Everything's going to be upside down, amen, not just because I'm God, but because the Word of God said the most important thing to go on in my house it should be and always will be a house of prayer oh hallelujah amen 
Then I read in John chapter 20 and verse number 30. It said, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. He said, there's other things that Jesus did that were not written. He said, I'm just, but he said, the reason that I have written this is because There's going to come a day when I'm going to fold my hands for the last time over my chest and they're going to bury me in a grave. And what we've we've told you would only last a generation. And so the word of God, amen, is written so that it can be carried from generation to generation. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. He said, I want you to know the reason that I wrote this book. Amen. It's to prove to you once and for all, Jesus is the Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The reason that I wrote, amen, that he was the healer is because I wanted you to know that Jesus is the Christ. The reason that I wrote, amen, that uh, the devils had to flee, amen, was because I wanted you to know Jesus is the Christ. The reason that I told you Lazarus could come back from the dead is I wanted you to know Jesus is the Christ. The reason that you can read about the feeding of the thousands is not so that you know that he can provide for you, but that you would know Jesus is the Christ. And the authority that he has, when you read it, you can know that any problem that you have, as long as you serve the Christ, Amen. You can have your need met by Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So he looked at his disciples. He said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. Oh, my, time flies when you're having fun. But I'm going to tell you, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to, to the uttermost part of the earth. Now, a lot of the things they did, they did as a witness of what Jesus Christ was and what Jesus Christ is. The reason that that we tell you what we're telling you is because we saw you crucify him. That's what Peter said. And, uh, And many times they talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they use that as a part of the witness. But I want you to listen to the first message that was ever preached. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 16. But this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. You know what Peter did? He took what Jesus had taught him. And he said, I'm going to confirm what's what's been said in the Old Testament. And I'm bringing it into the New Testament. And I'm going to let this world know, amen, that the authority of the Old Testament confirms the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. He said, this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Now you go on down to verse number 25. And, and, I, and I know we could go quite a bit, but just for for. David speaketh concerning him. In other words, he said, I just want to bring it in there and I'm going to tell you by the authority of the word of God that David spoke, I foresaw the Lord always before my face for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. He said, and again, another time he says, and again, this is what he said. You read down to Acts chapter 3 and verse number 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, amen. In other words, amen, he's taking it and he's saying, I'm not just saying that this stuff is just a church that we decided to invent. 
And I'm not just saying that Jesus was some great prophet and that's all that he was. But I'm taking the word of God from the Old Testament and I'm proving according to the Old Testament that what we have is truth. Amen. And this truth will never die. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I take the New Testament. Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But they took the Old Testament and they proved according to what the prophets had written, what the, what the law said. And they said, we can take Amen. This church and we can run it through the law, through the commandments of the Old Testament. And when it comes out, it's going to show that the law was fulfilled within the church. Hallelujah. And what this church is even today. Amen. It is built and founded upon the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for a powerful word. Amen. He, Jesus said it this way. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The most stationary thing that we know, amen, in our natural mind is the heavens and the earth. Wake up and in the morning, amen, if I get up early enough, I can see the sunrise. Amen. If I stay up late enough, I'll see the sunset. I know that it's a written thing. Every morning when I wake up, it's going to be coming over the horizon. Every night before I go to bed, that sun's going to set there, amen, in the western horizon. It's something that God, amen, had set. When I wake up, I know that I'm going to be able to stand up on the ground, amen. Amen. It's something that's solid, amen, within, within the reason of human mind. But Jesus said, the heavens and the earth will pass away, but my word is more powerful than the heavens and the earth. Amen. Something that will last forever. So in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 11, amen. Whenever they asked him, by what a power, by what authority uh, does this lame man walk? Peter said, well, I could tell you just by the name of Jesus Christ. But since we're going to go ahead and connect some things, I've got to take you to the book of Psalms. And I'm going to tell you, this is the stone which, the, which was set at not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. He said, before I can, I know that I could just stand and say, neither is there salvation on any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But so that you know that I'm not just making this stuff up as I go, I'm going to take it by the authority of the book of Psalms, and I'm going to tell you, amen, what you're looking for, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ is found in Psalms where it says, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. It's become the head of the corner. Verse number 25, he said, by, uh, Who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Even in their prayer meetings, the apostles and the saints of that, old te of that New Testament church, amen, now, even the saints in that New Testament church, in their prayer meeting, they took Old Testament, amen, verses, and they began to pray them because there is an authority that the Word of God has. And when they begin to pray the word of God, <laughs> the place was shaken. I mean, whenever they begin to pray and they begin to quote the word of God, amen, the old earth began to say, I can't stand still in this, in this type of, a, uh, of an atmosphere. Chapter number 6 and verse number 2 of Acts. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them. And they said... It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. And they said, look, the most important thing that we could ever do is to embrace the word of God. If we leave the word of God and we do something else besides the word of God, we've lost the purpose of the church. But the purpose of the church, its first and initial purpose is to preach the word. 
It's to love the word. It's, and if we leave that, we, it's, not, it's not a good enough reason to help somebody that's in need. Is not a good enough reason to leave the word of God. We'll try to find somebody that can, amen, take care of those that are needy, amen. But as far as, as, far as our responsibility, the, the apostles said, our responsibility is we ought to embrace the word of God. That ought to be our number one goal in life. Verse number four went on to say, but we will give ourselves, amen, to two things. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. He said, that's what our purpose in life is. Amen. Our purpose in life is, first of all, to pray. Second of all, it's to present the Word of God. It's to present, the, it's to present what the Bible says, what the Old Testament. And at that time, it was just Old Testament. They had to present what the Old Testament said. And they, and they presented it with the experience of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the things that they had seen that we know now is the written word of God in the Gospels. And they used it, and the apostles said, we're not getting away from the Old Testament. That's our roots. There's something powerful about the Old Testament, and when you join it with the New Testament, it brings the glory and uh, and so and so in verse number 7 amen listen to what happened when they devoted themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word the bible said in verse number 7 and the word of god increased and the number of disciples multiplied in jerusalem greatly now the bible said in acts chapter number 2 that there was added to the church 3000 souls Addition. How many knows what addition is? One plus one equals, don't nobody say three. <laughs> That's addition. It's taking small numbers and making them bigger. That's addition. And, uh, and the Bible said in Acts chapter 2, the Lord added to the church. In Acts chapter number 3, at the, at, uh, at the healing of the lame man and the Lord added to the church. But here in this verse in Acts chapter number 6, and the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied. In other words, he added 3,000, he added 5,000, but then at this particular juncture when they said, we're just going to give ourselves to prayer, amen, and to the word of God, God said, it's not going to just be added, but now we're going to multiply. And I know what happens whenever you add 120 and 3,000. But I don't know what happens whenever you take 120 and multiply it by 3,000. But I know it's a whole lot bigger. <laughs> Whenever you take the Word of God and you begin to use the Word of God the way that God intended it for it to be used, there is no limit to what God wants to do when you take His Word and what God will do when you take His Word and stand upon it. He may start by adding to your life. But if you'll continue to stand on the Word of God, amen, it's not just an addition process, but He continually multiplies us, amen, multiplies first of all our individual lives, but then He begins to multiply the church. When we take the Word of God and we put it where it needs to be, God, amen, will put His blessing upon us in such a phenomenal way. And so, I, and, I, and you read that Acts chapter 7, and it is so full of Scripture. I don't have time to, time to teach there, but when you take Acts chapter 7, he continually quotes from the Old Testament as Stephen is getting ready right before he is stoned to death. Amen. He doesn't say, I'm standing for a church and a, and a belief system that started on the day of Pentecost 10 years ago. But Stephen said, I just want you to know 
Amen. What I'm standing on is the truth that started way back and he starts at the beginning of Abraham's existence and he carries it all the way through even to Solomon and on beyond. And he said, and he said, and you have hardened your hearts and everything that he preaches on the, in his message in Acts chapter 7, he continually uses the word of God. That's why they were so convicted because they knew, amen, that what he was saying was not just man's wisdom, but they knew what he was saying was under the authority of the word of God. And his word brings conviction. His word brings power. I'm thankful today for a powerful word, hallelujah, that can encourage me and strengthen me and give me the guidance and direction that I need within my life. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. So Timothy, the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, telling you how to live. Reproof, correcting you when you don't live right. Correction, changing your course. An instruction teaching you in the ways of righteousness. So in chapter 4 and verse number 1, the Apostle Paul said, I told you that the word is powerful. But now I charge you, Timothy, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. This is the only thing that I'm telling you. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, use that word of God to a in a position where, where it will correct a person's life and it will change them into the direction so they're more like Jesus Christ. He said, because there is coming a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will not listen to the Word of God and take heed to what the Word of God says. They will say, oh, it's just your opinion on what the Word of God says. And we're living in a society that has stepped into that realm where they say, oh, it's just another book of philosophy. I'm sorry for their misinterpretation, but this is not a book of philosophy. This is the word of the Almighty God. And as the word of Almighty God, we will stand and be judged, amen, one day by the power of his word. He said there comes a time when they won't endure sound doctrine but after their own lust their own thinking they will say tell me the things that I want to hear don't tell me amen what I need to hear they will say don't tell me how to live I already know that just tell me I'm doing all right Pick and choose from the Word of God. Try to find the words that talk about His love. But don't tell me, amen, that I'm on a pathway toward judgment. Tell me that I need... You know what he's saying? He's saying they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. He said they don't, they don't want that type of stuff. Amen. But I, I want you to know that the Word of God is still just as powerful. It's still just as true and it's still just as necessary that we follow it. I need the word of God to be saved. I need to know how to live in my life. Let's stand together today. Oh, hallelujah. There is an authority that comes in the word of God. I do believe in the love of Jesus Christ. And the reason that I serve him is because he loved me and then now I love him. Some of the things I don't do aren't because my daddy told me not to. Most of the things that I don't do are because the word of God has taught me. And I said I live this life because I know it's right. 
Amen. I don't, I don't go certain places because I know that that would be, that would take me down a wrong path. I, I, whenever I see that the conversation might be going into the gutter, I try to get as far away from the gutter as I can. Amen. I'm not going to try to put myself in a position. Amen. Where it would be wrong. But I'm going to let the word of God be my lead, leading and my guide. Hallelujah. Sweetheart, go ahead. Right. Look, it's in there.